Hello, this is Mikey Games Scratch, and today we've got another Blender Quick Tip. Today we're looking at the Lattice Object and Modifier. Uh, they're somewhat underused, especially amongst nude Blender folk, uh, but they're very powerful, uh, the Lattice is. Uh, it allows you to take an underlying very dense mesh and control it with a very minimal amount of control points, uh, allowing you to make sweeping changes, nice organic changes, but not having to deal with hundreds or possibly thousands of faces. Let me show you exactly what I mean. It's a very simple to use tool, but it's very powerful. And the nice thing is, since it's a modifier, it's non-destructive. Until you apply it, it doesn't actually um, change the underlying geometry at all. Uh, so first off, we start with the, our basic scene. Let me just clear this up a little bit. Get rid of the stuff we don't need. Get rid of the sidebar. Eh, we might use animation later. So um, here's your simple cube, and we're going to use it to make slightly more complex geometry. So let's select it. Oops. Uh, grab face. And we'll just extrude that guy up. We're going to make a very simple vase, I guess, today. All right, so there we're extruded into four segments, and now we're just going to subdivide the heck out of this guy. Um, let's do it. There. So we've got uh, 1,000 faces behind our 2,300 polygons um, behind the scenes that we're now going to manipulate. And using each one of these individually is annoying. Uh, you can do fall off and kind of select an entire area, but if we want to do like sweeping form changes, the lattice really comes in pocket, uh, really comes in powerful. So let's take a look now. Uh, switch out to object mode. And let me just go into front view, x-ray, and orthographic. And that's just somewhat center it, like so. And now just go in add and a lattice. The first thing you want to do is scale up so you slightly contain the underlying source. And then we're going to scale in the z-axis. Same deal. We just want to slightly uh, exceed the bounds of our underlying shape. Let me just check from the side. There, perfect. So we're, we're bounding our shape perfectly with our, our new lattice. Uh, now we go select our uh, underlying shape again and go to modifiers. And now add modifier and add a lattice modifier. And it's going to say under object here, select lattice, like so. And you can change the, uh, the amount that the lattice applies. We're going to go with 100%, so leave it at 1. And now select your lattice right here, and go into the uh, lattice tab. And this is where you control the number of segments of your lattice. So if you need uh, more control points, you do them here. Less control points, you can do them here. Uh, you can also change the type um, of the, the splines being generated. We're using B splines. It works fine for me. Um, so let's just add a couple of segments in each direction. It's mostly this direction I care about. And let's see this side. We want to get another vertical seg. Oops. So it's V. All right. There we go. So there is our shape. A lot less control points to deal with than our underlying mesh uh, while well, we're dealing with this, this lattice. So now that we're done that, uh, it's a simple matter of going into edit mode. And here's one of the downsides of the lattice. It doesn't have the controls that uh, vertex or edge or polygon loops do. Um, you basically have circle select, box select, normal select, and that's it. So there's no uh, edge rings or edge loops type selections or anything like that. So we'll use a box to select these uh, vertices or control points. And now if I move them, you will see, if I get out of x-ray mode, that the underlying uh, shape is being altered as well. So let's undo that and we're going to go ahead and quickly make a vase. And that's just a matter of let's grab these points here and we'll uh, scale them out. Grab these ones here. Same deal. Uh, let's see. These ones here. All right. So it's not the world's best vase, but as you can see, our changes are happening. Uh, we're just making small changes to this, like five, ten control points per uh, segment, and the underlying mesh. So if I switch back over, you can see that the actual mesh itself is being updated uh, by this outer control lattice that's affecting it. So, but if I show you, if I go to this mesh itself, if I select it, but if we go into edit mode, you'll see all of a sudden unaffected. Um, so until we actually apply this uh, translation, uh, sorry, this, this modifier, the uh, underlying mesh is not affected at all. Only the uh, top level object is. But if we do want to have it so that the changes we have made are now permanent, uh, we just come on over to our modifiers with our uh, underlying mesh selected, not with, the, uh, not with the lattice selected, but with the mesh selected, and then we click apply, 
and now if I can switch into edit mode, the changes are applied. So we could just we could grab the lattice now right here. Oh, let's get out of object. Grab that lattice, and it's gone. Uh, and we've just created. All right, it's a very square looking vase, uh, but we'll call that a pillar instead. Uh, but you can create these fast organic shapes using a lot of underlying detail, but this simple lattice cage on the outside. And here I just use scaling, but you can uh, rotate, etc., all these things. And then when you're done, just click apply, and the geometry is updated. However, let me just undo a couple of that. So we have the uh, lattice back, and the modifier is applied. Okay, I got to do a couple more undos. Okay, so now we're back to the point where the modifier is attached to our uh, object again. Let me show you one neat thing that you can do here. So let me just grab the lattice again. Am I in edit mode? No, object mode. Come on, lattice. There we go. So I got the outer lattice is selected. Go back to the front. What we can do is animate it. Just like you would with a basically normal keyframe, we're using shape keys instead. Uh, so we're at 0, 0, and we're going to just set up a base shape key called basis when you create the first one. I'm not going to cover shape keys in detail here, but I'm just going to show you how this lattice can be used to make uh, sweeping level transforms in an animation as well. And then let's move to like key say 40 here. Uh, this actually isn't going to do anything yet because I need to update our shape key. So I'll create another shape key and then with it selected, I'll go into the edit mode box and let's just all right, select nothing, select top, and we'll just scale it up like so. Okay, so now we have these uh, this set of keys going on. Oops, I should have done this differently. Um, okay, so out of edit mode, and you'll see it went back to zero. So now I'm going to go back to zero with keyframe right here, and with it at zero, zero, I can right click and say insert keyframe. And this is just a slider, a value of zero to one. This is how much it's applied. So now I'm going to move to say frame 40 or 50 or whatever, and I'll just jack this value up. To 100%. And I'll just come up here and I'll sort of keyframe. And let's just cap our animation at 50 frames. And now you'll see you can use it to animate a shape. So Lattice is used to, to control a more complex surface underneath with a very small set of uh, control points. Obviously you can create, you can add more, you can add less. And it allows you to make sweeping massive changes to the underlying geometry however you wish. Now of course, now that we're using the uh, the lattice for uh, deformation uh, for this uh, shape keys. We can't remove the modifier from the um, the mesh, or it's not going to animate anymore. Uh, but if you do want to just use it as a modeling tool uh, and have it affecting the underlying geometry, you just finish the modifier, click apply, and the shape is set. Uh, so hopefully that was useful. It's a very neat tool that not enough people have in their toolbox. Uh, that's a lattice, and it basically it's just like a cage around your shape that allows you to shape it like silly putty. And as you can see, it's one that can be animated over time. Thank you.